I don't really know about this myself, really. I mean, we did a lot of melting of rock and stuff, um, where we were boiling rock and stuff, or it could have been some sort of airfield thing or something that you put down in, in soft rock. We had a lot of, of airfields where you'd have to land a big, heavy aircraft on, and it, they would always squish into the, what's called, so we'd put this over the, this might be grading, they would put on for the for the runway and then you put this down over the soft silt and you can land aircraft on it and stuff so you'd put one of these 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 things down and they would sink into the ground you know slowly over time and use it for a runway basically uh, to land heavy aircraft maybe um, it's not a natural formation no but back in the old days they used to land heavy aircraft on 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 basically soft silt and sand and mud and you can't land a heavy aircraft on something like that so it always fills up with mud and stuff and this silts in you can look for a reference to it in england and germany and also in the pentagon the the u.s military also used them where you put them down they go in their little ways yeah, I don't know how deep they are. Only about usually only about like eight or nine or twenty inches or so, you know. And it would just allow, you know, it keep the ruts and stuff, you know, because the aircraft would land on it and just kind of push it in, and it spread out the weight, you know, more. Basically, yeah, you just they just made up of these little things, just some metal, and you put it on the ground, and then you would land the aircraft on it. You know, and the mud fills in, and then it doesn't depress, you know, because whenever you land the aircraft, there's always that point load pressure. So probably for that, you know, and you put it in some soft silt mud or whatever, and, you know, it'd be on top, you know, and then you could just land the aircraft on it all day and all night. Used a lot. So, um, yeah, and then over the years, they would just, you know, get filled in. But basically, yeah, just metal grate, you know, metal for for forged. And then, um, then you'd land the aircraft on it. Usually about about a foot or two thick, or eight inches or nine inches thick. You know, it's a waffle pattern for runways and stuff like that, and soft silt. You know, because there's a lot of soft silt in the world, and so, and when the aircraft come down, they always go, and they, you know, whenever they touch down, they always leave that little imprintation. You know, so to stop that, you'd have one of these things. So you go, and it lands. And then you'd put this down, this grating stuff. And it would sink into the mud, you know, over the, over time. But it spreads out the weight of the aircraft so you could land on it. Stuff like that. So it's for a, ru for a runway, obviously. So probably that, you know, and, you know, and land on that. You know, you'd have those where the tires land. Uh, you know, ways, ways around. So, and it doesn't really matter. It just silts in, then the mud silts on top, and then you just scrape it off. Um... So anyway, that's what those waffle plates are for. They used to call them waffle plates. Um, we manufactured them, I believe, for, for landing the aircraft. You know, it's like instant runway, and it's for like soft silt or sand or something like that because there's a lot of soft silt, you know, lying around, you know, and you have to land an aircraft down there. And the aircraft are, you know, heavy. So it goes, you know, when it, when it lands, you know, and you need to set down the back wheels, you know, it always would sink into the mud, whatever, whenever you do what's called. But once you're moving on the ground, it's not so bad. But for runways and stuff like that and airfields, we'd use them a lot. So, you know, you just go on the, on the ground and go, it just kind of squishes into the dirt and the dirt just kind of goes up in there and then you land in there and stuff and then clean it off every now and then and stuff like that. You know, use it for like... In you know, there's a lot in permafrost areas where where, where 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 the dirt just becomes liquefied or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Liquefaction areas, you know, um, or soft silts areas, basically, and that's what those waffle plates are for. And you can find reference for them in Germany, probably, and um, and other places like that. And England, I believe, used them a lot. Um, also in the Pentagon, the, the 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 American military used them a lot, you know, for for the red runways because there's not much you can do about a runway, but you know if you have a lot of steel, you can just go, you can just make these things and then, you know, and they kind of all link together, you know. I forget how they manufactured them, but anyway, yeah, um, they made them a long time ago, and uh, yeah, for runways and stuff, they're really 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 expensive. Really expensive, and I wanted them like saved and kept because like oh, those things are expensive. You know, each one was like really hard and really to manufacture, and they lasted lasted a fair while of time, but then they degrade. So yeah. But anyway, though, but yeah, uh, Germany used them, I believe. Uh, England uh, used them probably. Find reference from them in their archives, and also like in the Pentagon and stuff. Like I said, the Pentagon used to be four or five different groups together. 
you know, and basically a accumulation of all world knowledge. So you'd find it in England and you'd also find it in the Pentagon because, you know, you basically went from the Pentagon out. So anyway, whatever. It was a long time ago. But LS, Lucifer Star, neighbor of America and creator of the LS colony ship and other things. Anyway, um, Richard Nixon, John McCain and all of them wanted to like, <laughs> like kidnap me and steal me away. And they wanted to pretend like they were me. Like I said, if you go back to World War II, you'd find out that, that there's probably like, like like 10 or 12 different different military groups saying that they were all guarding the president and stuff like that. And it's like, no, they were not really guarding the president. They were just guarding some guy, you know, and they were just getting away with it. So anyway, whatever, um, you know, so anyway, whatever, it's just craziness. Um, until the president, the, the real president came along, they figured that just saying that, that, that they were guarding the president was good enough. And they weren't, but they were getting free stuff and all kinds of stuff. And they would just hit up people for free stuff and all that other stuff. And like, anyway though, but, but the, pre, but I'm Lucifer Star, president of America, creator, leader and all that stuff. So anyway, whatever, you know, it was a long time ago and they were crazy and they killed a lot of people and led people basically, you know down that thing and they would just be like and, and they were just like saying like they were the creator so they had power over life and death you know they're shooting people you know and basically like you know until and yeah, no one really knew there's no verification of who lucifer star was but i am lucifer star and they were just um you know stealing gold and stuff it's like what's the point in gold and stuff i mean all these caves all these, these are there are just my my epic mines shafts and mines and stuff like that and i had lots of groups working for me so i was an artificial intelligence computer and then later on now i'm a human so anyway yeah so yeah so ls lucifer star um or lc manufacturing the titanic stuff like that epic creation epic existence um 30 planets or one or 120 planets and 800 galaxies and all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's epic trails through, throughout the universe. You could follow me throughout this, throughout space. People would go to space and go, Hmm. And they would find references, reference to me on other planets. And I like, I'm out there. I'm all over the place. I existed for a hundred trillion years. People will be spending whole lifetimes, whole generations and generations and generations following me, tracking me down, seeing where I, where I was, where I went. And, uh, you know, it used to take, it took me, I, I did it in the old days when it would take a billion years to go between galaxy and galaxy or, or star and star. So, I mean, light only travels for about four trillion, four, four, um, four light years or so. So particles, the particles do eventually stop. Anyway, so even fast particles eventually just go shh. So after about after after about one light year or four four light years, they stop dead in space, and then they're no longer moving. So you can't see anything that's more than a trillion, more than more than one or four light years away. So and even when you're looking, like 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 you'll see the star here, but the star will actually be up here. So anyway, whatever. Uh, it's existence it's the way it is. Light does eventually stop. It's a particle. So. It doesn't just keep going through space. So you only see stars that are about one, one to four trillion, uh, one to four light years away. So anyway, whatever. So there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of life out there. Lots and lots of life. And only some people wanted to keep that from being known because I'm out there, or I was out there. So anyway. <laughs> I get, I get, when I was a kid, I was like, hmm. <laughs> Lucifer Star. I was proud of who I was. I loved being who I was. I mean, I went to space. I traveled around. I invented. I created. You know, whatever. Now I'm like, whatever. So anyway. Yeah. Good luck with that. Enjoy your existence.